Okay, one of the things we talked about in the notes was the importance of being able to describe a solution in terms of concentration. This Scribblecast will help you uh, find two or three different ways of describing a solution in terms of its concentration. Okay, uh, the first one, uh, maybe the easiest one uh, to talk about, is uh, looking at concentration in terms of mass percent. Basically, what the mass percent is asking or describing is what mass of solute is there in uh, compared with the total mass of a solution. Okay? Remember that the total mass of solution includes both the solute and the solvent that you're dis dissolving it into. Okay, so mass percent, it basically tells you what percentage of the solution is whatever you have. So if it's a salt solution or a chlorine solution or an acid solution, if they talk about mass percent, it, it's giving you a percentage of the solute in total solution. Let's try a question. So here's one where it says, solution prepared by mixing 2.50 grams of calcium chloride. So the 2.50 grams, that would be my solute. And it says they're dissolving it in 50 grams of water. So 50 grams of water would be my solvent. Okay, so to calculate the mass percent, just use my formula. So mass percent is equal to the mass of solutes, 2.5 zero grams divided by the total mass of the solution so my solvent weighs 50 my solute weighs 2.50 so I have to add those two so 52.50 grams times 100 okay then just grab your trusty calculator I'll grab mine so 2.5 divided by 52.50 whoops equals times by 100. So that would be equal to 4.7619%. Typically, we'd want to use sig figs in this case. So uh, in the question, I use three. So I'll give three sig figs here, too, as well. So 4.76%. So that would be the mass percent of that particular solution. Okay, sometimes they might give us the, ma the mass percent and want to know how much um, of the original solute was in the solution. So we can manipulate that formula. So I'm going to be given this number. Uh, I want to know that number, and I'll give it, be given the total mass of the solution. And that's what they've done in this case. So we need to be able to work things around a little bit. So the mass percent is 5.00 is equal to the mass of solute, I don't know, I'll just write mass up there, total mass of the acetic acid altogether, oh no, calculate the mass of acetic acid in the sample of vinegar, so the whole thing is 250.0 grams times by 100. So if I want to figure out what the mass is, I need to do a bit of um, Formula manipulation, so I'm going to write my 5.00 uh, times 250.0 grams divided by 100. Notice that if, if it's all multiplication or division, if this is on the bottom on the right side of the equal sign, I can move and it becomes the top on the left side of the equal sign. Likewise, if I'm multiplying by 100 on this side, I'll divide by 100 on the other side. Okay, so the mass of my solute originally uh, is, turn my calculator on again here, clear, so 5 times 250.0 divided by 100 equals, so 12.5, so 12.5 grams. So I dumped 12.5 grams into a solution and made sure that the whole thing weighed 250 grams. If I did that, the mass percent would be 5%. Or in other words, if I had a 5% acetic acid solution, um, I would have dumped 12.5 grams and added or um, 
kept adding water until I had 250 grams total of solution. So that's mass percent. And that, that's, that's an okay way of describing concentration, often in um, alcohol or in vinegar, those kind of things. They give you a percent solution. Often, though, in chemistry, it's much more uh, common for us to use a different type of concentration. And that's called molarity or moles per liter. And we use that lots. We'll show in the last example here. Um, if we're doing uh, any kind of stoichiometry question or, <coughs> excuse me, any other type of question that uh, uh, involves grams of something and grams of something else, uh, moles is typically where what we want to convert everything into uh, before I describe things. So if I'm comparing one thing to another thing, moles is where it's at. So the molarity of a solution is equal to how many moles of solute I have divided by the total liters of solution. Often you might see a formula that looks like this. C standing for concentration is equal to N standing for moles and V standing for volume of the solution. Or you might see it like this. Molarity is equal to moles over volume. Okay, here's a couple of questions we can look at. Calculate the molarity of a solution. So I want to know molarity. Here's my formula. Prepared by dissolving 0.25 moles of solid calcium nitrate. So molarity is equal to the moles are 0.25. Nice that they gave me moles right to begin with. Divided by in enough water to make 2.50 liters of solution. So now I can go to my calculator, divide those two. So 0.25 divided by 2.50 equals 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Notice the units are moles per liter. Anytime I have a question where numbers are involved, always remember sig figs. Uh, originally I had two sig figs here. I have three sig figs there. So in my answer, I must include two. Here, I only have one sig fig, so I have to include a zero at the end. So there's my two sig figs. Remember, zero out front doesn't count. So there's my two sig figs. So the molarity of that solution is 0 0.10 moles per liter. Let's try another one. Calculate the molarity of a solution prepared by dissolving 250 grams. Uh-oh of solid calcium nitrate enough water to make 2.5 liters of solution. So the, again, they want molarity. My formula molarity is equal to moles over volume. In this case, <laughs> I don't know what my moles are. I do know what my volume is, though, 2.50 liters. But I need to determine moles. So I know to determine moles of any solution or of any substance, um, especially if I'm given grams, all I have to do is uh, divide the mass by the molar mass of that particular substance. So the mass is 250 grams, I guess 250.0 grams, divided by the molar mass, and I've conveniently down here uh, determined what the molar mass of calcium nitrate is. Notice there's one calcium. And then there'd be two nitrogens and six oxygens. So altogether, that's 164.10 grams per mole. So the grams cancel out. I'm left with moles. So if I do that on my calculator, which keeps turning off on me, so I go 250.0 divided by 164.1 equals. So I get 1.52 about moles. So the number of moles I have goes right here now. 1.52 moles. Notice my units are going to be in moles per liter. So the molarity is equal to, let me divide that, divide 2.5. So I get molarity is equal to 0 0.60938, etc., moles per liter.
in my calculator, this number was a little bit longer. And I just keep that number in my calculator when I do the final calculation. And then at the end, I'll round off to significant figures. You'll find some instructors like you to round off as you go. Some instructors like you to um, keep the number in your calculator until the very end. So just make sure you know from your instructor which way they prefer. Myself, I only round at the very end. So I had four sig figs, three sig figs. I need to round to three. 0 0.609 moles per liter. Okay, so that's uh, determining concentration in uh, molarity. Here's another question where they're, they're asking, it's a similar kind of question, but this time they're sort of asking to go backwards. So they're wanting to know what mass of sodium hydroxide is required to make one liter of a 0.5 molar solution. In the question right before, we actually were looking for this concentration. We were given mass, we were given volume, and so we went the other way. This question, we need to go backwards. Let me just write down a couple of formulas to maybe help me. So I know molarity is equal to moles over volume. I also know that moles are equal to mass over molar mass. Okay, so here I know the molar mass of sodium hydroxide right there is 40 grams per mole. Um, but I don't know what the mass is. And maybe I'll be able to determine the moles from over here. <laughs> Let's see. I know the molarity. That's right there. I also know the volume. Sure, I've got a formula. I know two of the three. I'll be able to determine moles. So it looks like what I'm going to do first is use this formula to determine moles and then take that moles over into this formula in order to determine mass. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, there's a couple of things that you might want to do. Uh, some people just plug numbers into a formula. I like to solve the formula first for the unknown and then plug in. So to, to rewrite this equation, I'm going to multiply both sides by V. And so I'll get a, a formula that looks like this. Molarity times V is equal to moles. Or, if you like to have your unknown always on the left, you could write it like this. Now, if you're having issues manipulating formulas like that, contact your instructor and they can help out. Okay, so the molarity is 0 0.500 moles per liter. I like writing molarity as moles per liter just because it helps me cancel uh, units later. My volume is 1.00 liters. Notice there my liters cancel. I'm left with moles. So the moles is equal to, if you use your calculator, you get 0 0.500 moles. So now I know how many moles of sodium hydroxide I have. My last step is to go over here and figure out what the mass is. So again, I like to, if I'm looking for mass, I like to manipulate my formula so I have uh, the unknown on a side by itself. So I just multiplied molar mass on either side. It canceled here. So I'm left with mass is equal to moles times molar mass, like I've written here. Again, if you have trouble manipulating, call, contact your instructor. So the moles I have from over here is 0 0.500 moles times the molar mass is right down there. I've conveniently calculated it for us already. Grams per mole. Notice the moles cancel and so I'm left with grams. So 0 0.5 times 40 is going to give me 20 uh, grams. Again I have to worry about sig figs here. 3 and 3 so I need to write 3. So far I only have 2 so I need to point point zero. That'll give me three sig figs. Okay, so that's a way of uh, using the molarity formula to help you find mass. You'll want to practice a number of those kind of questions on the worksheet or the online quiz or from the textbook, just so you get comfortable using those two formulas. Um, just one last thing, and it, it sort of uh, talks about what I, I had indicated earlier, that moles 
and molarity uh, are the things that in chemistry we often deal with. Here's a good example. Here I have a dissociation equation um, where dissociation equation where calcium hydroxide is dissociating into its ions. So if they say that, um, well maybe I should balance this first. I have one calcium, one calcium, two hydroxides, oh I need a two right there. Okay, so these are both one. Now it's balanced. So if they say I have a 0.300 molar solution of calcium hydroxide, so that's 0.300 molar solution of this, the question says what is the concentration of the calcium ions and what's the concentration of the hydroxide ions? Since we're dealing in molar and not mass percent, this won't work in mass percent. If I, since I'm dealing in molarity, um, what I can say is if I have 0.300 molar of calcium hydroxide, since this is a one-to-one -one relationship, I'm also going to have 0.300 molar of calcium ions. So how many ions or what concentration of hydroxide ions do you think there should be? dramatic pause. Yeah, it should be double whatever this is. And I can do that because I'm dealing in moles. Can't do it if I'm dealing in grams. So 0.300 molar for this one, since the, this is a 2, I need to double that, which would be 0.600 molar. So the concentration of hydroxide ions would be double the concentration initially of the calcium hydroxide um, uh, substance. So 0.600 molar. That will also help us when we start talking about pOH or pH later in the acid base section. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of a start on the calculations for uh, mass percent and uh, molarity. I'd encourage you to do lots of questions uh, so that you're comfortable in determining molarity of any solution uh, given its mass or uh, from the molarity determining the mass. So do lots and lots of questions. Okay, thanks.